Oh, here we are. So we can see here, we're now in the middle course of the River Severn and we're just outside, well, just in Tewkesbury, which was badly affected from flooding in 2007. But here I wanted to talk about the main reasons for flooding along a river such as this. Firstly, we can see if you're looking at the river, there's, a, there's huge changes. We can see it is a much, much flatter environment. We've got the floodplain on either side, the area where it gets flooded, where I spoke about the alluvium being deposited on the floodplain when the river floods. We can also see the discharge, the amount of water flowing in the river is much, much bigger. And you'll also, not that we can see, but process of traction, the movement of boulders rolling on the floor. You'll have saltation pebbles bouncing on the floor. This will be happening here as in the middle of this part of the river will be moving very, very fast, much quicker than it will be in the upper course of the river. But I wanted to talk about the reasons and the physical and human causes of flooding. Firstly, we can see here we've got a river, the River Avon, joining up with the River Severn. And the point where two rivers meet, where a, a tributary meets a river such as this, is called a confluence. So that's an important confluence, the point where two rivers meet. And that is exactly here where the Avon is joining up with the River Severn. But what are the main physical causes of flooding? Firstly, precipitation. When you have high amounts of rainfall and you might have a low pressure system, high amounts of rainfall, more water will flow into a river. That means the discharge, the amount of water into the river will increase. That will then lead to increased rates of flooding. The second factor could be rock type. If you have a hard impermeable rock such as maybe granite, the water from the rainfall will flow much faster into the river because the water is not being absorbed into the rock. If you have a softer rock and a more permeable rock that absorbs water, much more porous, the water will flow into the ground and it will be absorbed, go into the water table and it will take a much longer time for it to flow into the river, slowing down um, the rate of water going to the river, reducing the impacts of flooding. Another factor is antecedent conditions. If you've had heavy rainfall in the past and the ground is very saturated, so that means there's lots of water in the ground, water doesn't get absorbed into the ground anymore. That then means when you have high amounts of precipitation, the water will just flow over the top of the ground and will flow much, much faster into a river. Like a day like today, you can see it's incredibly hot. And when it's incredibly hot in the height of summer, the ground is incredibly hard and water doesn't get absorbed into the ground. It becomes very impermeable and doesn't absorb into the ground. That then means the water will just flow over the ground incredibly fast and will flow into a river, which is why you experience flash floods in the height of summer. The ground being incredibly hard and flowing over into, into the river. Another reason for flooding, another physical factor for causes of flooding, will be the relief, how high the ground is. If you're in a mountainous area, the water will flow fast down the steep slopes into a river. So when you've got steep slopes, maybe a V-shaped valley, water will flow down the V-shaped valley, down the slopes, into a river much, much faster, leading to an increased amount of water flowing into a river, leading to increased flooding risk. So those are the main physical factors of causing flooding. So to recap, precipitation, how much rainfall flows into, or amount of rainfall that then flows into a river, how hard the rock is, how permeable the rock is, the temperatures, have we had high amounts of rainfall in the past leading to the ground becoming saturated, or have we experienced hot conditions such as this leading to more water being able to flow into a river because the ground is very hard, or is there steep relief leading to water flowing into a river much, much faster. On the other hand, we also have human causes of flooding. When you build an urban area, you have lots of concrete. When you have lots of concrete, the water will flow as it's impermeable, it doesn't get absorbed into the ground, will flow much, much faster into the drains. And when it flows into the drains, it will then filter into a river such as the River Severn much, much faster. When this happens, the, there is a massive risk of flooding. And with that, 
people nowadays, as we're growing population in Great Britain, we've got much more, um, many more people, and we're choosing to build homes on floodplains. And when you build a home on a floodplain, you've got concrete, you've got a building, suddenly there's a high risk of flooding as a floodplain is there for a reason. It's much flatter on each side of this river as it gets flooded every winter. And suddenly building homes, building towns on floodplains will lead to increased risk from flooding. So we can see here, and I'm going to talk about in my next video, being here in Tewkesbury, the impacts of flooding from 2007. But you can see how, you know, the, the river's quite high here and we're in the middle of the summer. If you imagine when we have high amounts of rainfall, if you have hot conditions where the water flows over the ground really hot, really fast, or if you've got the ground saturated and it flows faster because of that, you're going to experience high amounts of flooding. There's a further factor that I didn't mention, deforestation, a human factor. Deforestation, chopping down trees along a river means there's little um, the trees capturing of that um, intercepting, sorry, being the concept, it's uh, intercepting that rainfall and chopping down trees means you'll have increased rates of flooding in a river. Trees absorb, the roots absorb water and the trees intercept the water, leading to increased or decreased um, or increased rates of flooding, depending on which way you do it. So building, planting trees will decrease the rate of flooding also. So lots of risks of flooding here. Great stuff, beautiful day here in Tewkesbury, some lovely geography in action.